Since 2003, this is the Sports Source. East Tennessee's number one sports talk show. Presented by Hype Wrench, and by Junk Be Gone, and by the Garza Law Firm. With your host, John Pennington. The Sports Source starts now. Good Sunday morning. Welcome into the Junk Be Gone studios for the Sports Source, State of Tennessee's only 90 minute year round live sports show, which we appreciate you making possible. You and the sponsors are the ones who make it possible for us to sit here for 90 minutes every Sunday all year long, uh, and we appreciate that. Uh, we got a lot to cover today. We got football, we got basketball, we got portal news from both, we've got a uh, live report from Lexington for uh, UT baseball, we've got a little Lady Vols in there, we've got a lot of NFL draft. So let's just dive right in by talking about who makes this possible, and that would be the Garza Law Firm. More than 20 years, Marcos Garza and the Garza Law Firm have been serving East Tennessee, not just with a top shelf legal practice, but also helping to support everything from absolute life-saving charities uh, right on down to local sports teams. When you need an attorney, trust the Garza Law Firm, as big a part of this community as anybody out there and a long proven track record of helping people when they need legal advice, legal defense. GarzaLaw.com to learn more. Marcos Garza, give them a shout this week. All right, let's welcome into the guys I called in this week. We have right over here, <laughs> mm -hmm. Jimmy Himes. We have Vince Ferrara and Josh Ward right here, both from 99.1 The Sports Animal. And right there, Chuck Cavalleras. All right, gentlemen, thank you all for being here. I appreciate it. Uh, let's start with Tennessee football. Spring practice is over, but the transfer portal is open. So far, only one major departure from the Vols, which is kind of amazing in this day and age. But that was linebacker Elijah Herring, which was a little bit of a surprise for a lot of people. This was Tennessee's <laughs> leading tackler last year. Now, he got thrown into action when Keenan Peely got hurt, but still, you see the leading tackler on a team go, okay, that's a bit of a surprise. Josh, what I want to know is I've seen two reactions to that. One, it's the leading tackler. And the other side, <laughs> ah, Keenan Peely's back. Who needs him? How big of a deal is this to lose Elijah Herring in the transfer portal coming out of spring practice? Well, I would not say it's a non-issue. I think Tennessee staff wanted Elijah Herring to stay. If the staff wants the player, then that if he's not you. there, that tells me that it's some kind of problem. Uh, Keenan Peely coming back, though, does help. They had Keenan Peely a year ago, though, and then they only had him for a game, and right. Elijah Her Herring became a much more important player. So. Uh, Jeremiah, uh, Jeremiah T. Lander is a year older. Right. Arion Carter is a year older. They have real talent. So the position going in, I think, looks okay. But if they deal with injury and depth all of a sudden is challenged, not having Elijah Herring could become a big issue. Yeah, I mean, but here, you know, here's one thing, guys. Didn't he have, like, the, soldier, the, the shoulder surgery and he missed spring practice? Mm -hmm. And with some of the recruits that have been brought in and you got a new position coach, you're, you're falling back. He might have been, what, third on the depth chart. So I think there were several things going on there, and I think it's a sign of the way Tennessee maybe has been recruiting pretty good because uh, uh, he was the first signing class Josh Heupel had. A three-star recruit wasn't really highly recruited the way I understand it, but the pass coverage thing is what, middle linebacker, yeah, you should have a lot of tackles, but the pass coverage thing is what I think they were kind of looking at, not quite good enough for the SEC. I think it's a minor blow that could be a bigger deal if they don't injury. work, Josh said, yeah. yeah. Because I think I think Herring looked at it and said, I'm, I'm not probably going to be a starter. I won't be a starter if Peely's healthy, I'll, and I'm, has he fallen behind T. Lander? Mm -hmm. Does a new linebacker coach like T. Lander more or Carter? So I think playing time was a big issue with him. Now, if there is an injury, then it hurts you depth-wise. So it just depends on that situation. But I do think Tennessee has enough talent there uh, to, uh, to where Herring thought, I'm not going to get as much playing time as I want. I'm probably not right. going to be a starter. I'll find another destination. Yeah. And, and missing spring practice, he didn't get a chance to really show what he could do on That's the right. field. Because right. when coaches come in, it's a clean slate for them. Yeah. And that's unfortunate for him to not be able to develop that camaraderie. And T. Lander did have a great spring, as good a spring as anybody on this football team, it sounds like. Um, he's one, he was one of seven returning linebackers. I don't think he was going to start, in my opinion. 
maybe Arian Carter and maybe now T. Lander would have yeah. both been ahead of him. So uh, it was tough. It was unfortunate. Edwin Spillman's come in as a true freshman and really made it an impact. Maybe his impact isn't this year, but there's another guy that he might see, oh, man, that guy's going to hop over me uh, uh, with uh, Burns as well, another four-star coming in in the summer. So it, it's a mm-hmm. better position group in terms of depth. Whenever I – hear somebody say, I'm not worried about this guy leaving. I always go to the place Josh went, and that is it's not a big deal until it is a big deal. It's not a big deal Mm -hmm. until three guys get hurt in front of him. I like having depth, and you also nailed it where if the coaches wanted to keep him, I think fans should want to keep him. Mm -hmm. I think media should want to keep him. If the coaches would look at it and say, we'd be better with him here, better with Mm -hmm. him here. It also shows one thing that's a different uh, angle of this transfer portal thing that everyone's getting used to. Used to, if a coach leaves, you wonder, okay, what's this do for recruiting classes down the road because he's built re- relationships. Now you look at it and say, what's it do to that entire room right now? Because if this guy leaves, how many of you guys are going to follow? Also, new guy comes in, how many guys are going to say, I don't want to start from ground zero, as we're saying exactly. here with, exactly. with Heron. So just another side angle to this portal stuff that you're going to start paying attention to, you know, oh, we don't like this assistant coach, get him out of here. Okay, you prepared to lose a bunch of the guys in that room because that shuffles everything, and who knows what the what the the, the ripple effect is going to be when a coach leaves, an assistant coach leaves. That wasn't a, a real possibility before. Now that you've got transfer portal, it makes it free to leave every year and <laughs> transfer five times. I think it's a bigger deal. Well, to your point and to Vince's point, if Brian Jean Marie were still here, would Herring have entered the transfer portal? Right. You know, we don't know that. Right. But obviously, Jean Marie liked Herring, and so that could have had an impact as well. And I'll tell you, the first the first thing that came to mind for me when I heard about him going in the portal. Oh wait, what about Caleb Herring? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now his younger brother, mm-hmm. that is one of those Leo's edge rush guys that has maybe even more upside. I think so, even more upside than Elijah. Now it sounds like they're they're keeping things separate. No hints of him hitting the portal, but it's something you think about. Well, mm-hmm. also, if, if he goes somewhere and gets good money and gets a good deal, wouldn't that wouldn't you pay attention to that if you were his brother? I would notice that. Yeah, and I heard one of the places is uh, maybe a visit. It's Colorado. Right? Yeah. So mm-hmm. we'll see. All right. Uh, well, they. They've got everybody transferring out, so it would do them good to have somebody <laughs> looking in. Uh, very quickly here, Vince, last week you said you thought that the Vols should pursue Oregon State running back Damian Martinez in the portal. He had a visit set up this week. Then the visit got canceled, and everybody takes that as Tennessee. Let him know he wasn't going to be a priority in terms of NIL dollars, et cetera, et cetera. I would assume you think that that's a mistake that they still need to be going after, if not Martinez, somebody in the portal. In terms of talent, yeah, right. I think yeah, I, I think so. And look, also the last check, they hadn't contacted Dallin Hayden, uh, Aaron's son, uh, who played high school in the Memphis area, who's uh, hit the transfer portal from Ohio State. So uh, maybe that's changed here recently, but. Those are two of the better running backs that are in the portal. That's interesting. Now, we don't know. I don't know if, if it was Tennessee per, is the one that initiated it or if he backed out. Right. But still, it's yeah, it, that's a talent that I think you'd want. Well, in the, room. Well, the Dallin quick, Hayden I, thing, I was almost uh, – I was a little surprised that Tennessee didn't go after – didn't go harder right. after him out of high school. With, uh, with Martinez. Because you've got a legacy there and uh, pretty good. I heard – and he said – of course, you hear this. It's not about the NIL money. He's wanting a guarantee of playing time. He's wanting to be the first uh, – running back taken in the 2025 NFL draft. So he wanted, I think, Tennessee to say, you're going to be the number one guy. And that, and I think Arizona is where he's going to end up. They're going to be able to do that. But I don't think Tennessee could have said that, really, mm-hmm. make a promise like that. No, with Dylan Sampson, plus you wonder about how much NIL money is. We talked about it last week. How much NIL money do you give to Martinez? And then what does what trickle-down effect does that have yeah. Yes, in terms of the rest of your running back room? Your thoughts on going after another running back or Martinez or anything you like? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, we, we can get to the Spring Raiders flowers. if you want to. <laughs> uh, Raiders. They do need help at running back. I mean, we want to talk about depth. It's – it's a pretty big right. question, I think, already yeah. uh, with Cameron Seldon's injury that's going to probably linger over into the season for 2024. Martinez, I think it is a combo of money and then what kind of role can he be promised. If he can't be promised RB1, which is going to affect what he can be promised mm-hmm. with his money, right. well, that, I think, kind of takes Tennessee out of the equation. But Tennessee, I think, needs help at running back. Khalifa Keith, Peyton Lewis, who they like a lot as a freshman, but he's a true freshman who didn't get to didn't go through go spring through practice either. Mm-hmm. And Deshaun Bishop, who I think impressed, it's just it's an unknown. And again, if you deal with another injury, then you're in real trouble. Maybe you should have just uh, gave Elijah Herring a chance to be your short yardage running back. <laughs> why, why does Martinez need a guaranteed playing time when he's an All-American? Like, come in here and your play will 
make that determination. And, and like, it's not like they have such a, a deep room like Ohio State, you're right. running back to where uh, you might get left behind. Mamas and daddies and hangers on like to see a kid on the field. They don't ever like to see, <laughs> they don't care who's out there in front of them. It can be Herschel Walker. Why isn't my kid playing? Yeah. And I think they tell the kid that, and the kid's thinking the same thing. Just a guess. But <laughs> just a guess. usually it goes back to the people around the kid. Right. <laughs> so, all right. Uh, very good. We got tons of stuff to come up. We got we got basketball. We got transfer portal for the Vols. Uh, we've got uh, little lady Vols. We got NFL draft. Just tons of that. But next, we got a live report from Lexington, Kentucky, where John Wilkerson is. We'll talk to him about today's baseball game between Tennessee. It's a rubber match of that game. We'll talk about that series. We'll talk about Tennessee versus Kentucky next on The Sports Source. And welcome back to The Sports Source. This segment brought to you by A.G. Hines Company. And let me tell you, when it's time to start a do-it-yourself project at your home, start the way the top construction companies in town start, by heading to A.G. Hines Company. Wonderful people, from the Hines family to their friendly staff, they have what you need in terms of tools, in terms of materials. You will never work with better people, too, top to bottom. I tell you that. I was over there this week. They are fantastic, all of them. A.G. Hines Company, that's where you need to start your next do-it-yourself home improvement project. Okay, now, here's the thing. <laughs> uh, we did have it good to go, nice graphic ready to go, but there's a connection problem with getting to Lexington. So it's a good thing that we're going to be able to talk Vol Baseball here with... <laughs> It's Ferrara. <laughs> hey. Sorry about Sorry, that. Sorry, everybody. This is, this is the, uh, this is the new. This is the new paradigm of television. You know, it's all done with phones. So. Kentucky should call AG Heinz Company, get a facility built where they can actually get that. That's yeah. right. Get the signal. Yeah, get really. the phone signal at that. Would be great. Uh, Vince, uh, you had Blake Burke the other day break a in, in game one, which the Vols lost. We'll spin it positive and not talk mm -hmm. about the loss. Let's talk about Blake Burke broke the hit streak record of Condridge Holloway, which goes all the way back to 1975. So you're talking about a 50-year-old record. Yeah. He, he got it to 27 games. He got it to 28 games yesterday, correct? Or, or is he 29 uh, 28 games? 28 broke 28, it 20, and yeah. 29 yesterday. So yeah. he's 29 now. Your thoughts on breaking that record? Yeah, it's amazing. To be connected to such a legend like Condridge Holloway is something that you can never take away from Blake Burke. And the, this program continues to do amazing things under Tony Vitello. And um, it, that's, Blake Burke has gotten so much better in, in all facets of his game, defensively, offensively, hitting for average, not chasing pitches. Um, just incredible. And he's got a little war of the all-time home run record as well with, right. with Christian mm -hmm. Moore. Moore tied him. Uh, to start the game yesterday, game two, and then Blake Burke back to back at a home run, retake the lead. It's uh, it's incredible what those guys are doing right now in their junior years. And everybody gets uh, all obsessed with the home run records and that kind of stuff, and for good reason. That's impressive stuff, whether it's college pro, whatever. But I'm always impressed by these hit streaks because mm -hmm. one, you don't see those. That's not a record you see. It's like, like every year somebody else is on a, a a pace to break Pete Rose or whoever. Mm -hmm. To get to 27, 28, 29 straight game, that's a, that's a level of consistency night in, night out, where you're dialed in enough to get a hit out. I just, to me, that's a very impressive mark. It's harder for college kids because, one, you have midweek games against lesser uh, opponents, and so maybe you're not that motivated, things like that. So, and, and then they're just young kids. There's more things kind of in their ear. As, as professionals, they're dialed in. They're in their routine. So I think that's why maybe you see it extended a little bit more in the program. Won the game yesterday, nine to four, mm -hmm. um, and then today you got the rubber match in the series. What's sure. uh, who's on the mound? What's coming up? Uh, Xander Seacrest scheduled to start. He's actually been uh, so much more than I think a lot of people expected. He used to be their midweek starter and has done excellent in SEC play. And they've got plenty of arms still available to them, so they'll 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 combine it. It'll be at least two guys, maybe three, but. Uh, Xander's given him good starts and kept a lot of t SEC really good hitters off balance so far. Okay, very good. Vince, I appreciate it. Yep. Uh, that gives us a little extra time to talk about some other stuff, like Tennessee's basketball portal. Let's talk about who's in, who's out. Should they try and keep some of the guys who are out? Rick Barnes. It must have been something on social media. because I had 15 people text me or call me or mention to me, he's retiring. You heard this, he's retiring. We'll discuss that next. Come back <laughs> on the Sports Source. <laughs> Welcome back into the Sports Source. This segment brought to you by Parkside Cabin Rentals. Every week I tell you Parkside Cabin Rentals is the best deal in the Smokies. Well, you don't have to take it from me. TripAdvisor. TripAdvisor users awarded them with their Traveler's Choice Award for 2023. 
Great, and that means nothing's changed for 2024, obviously. Great cabins, great locations, and great prices. You can't beat ParksideCabinRentals.com. So plan your Smokies stay right there today. Just wait till after the show. But then you can get online and do it right there. Parkside Cabin Rentals. Okay, told you last week that the uh, volunteers were pursuing three top transfer targets. They already landed one of them. Let's go ahead and show you in case you haven't looked this up already. Darlinston Dubar, Dubar started at Iowa State for one year, then transferred to Hofstra, who played three seasons there. He'll be coming to Knoxville from Hofstra. You see his numbers last year, 34 minutes a game, 53%, 54% from the floor, 40% from three-point range. I'm talking about a 6'8 guard here. Uh, seven rebounds a game, 17 and a half points. I don't think anybody should put him in the Dalton Connect zone. But at the same time, a good get for Tennessee. They are still in the hunt for Igor Milicic. Uh, he played one season at Virginia, then transferred to Charlotte for two years. That's where he would be coming from. He is looking at Tennessee, Nebraska, and Baylor, 6'10 forward. You see his numbers last year, 32 minutes a game, 48% from the field, 38% for a big man from three points, uh, eight and a half rebounds, 13 points a game. Uh, and Tennessee still after Cade Tyson, though I think most people believe he's going to wind up at North Carolina. He's a North Carolina native. I know he visited here and was impressed, but uh, I think most people still think he's probably going to wind up at Chapel Hill. Um, Dubar... Milicic, the thing that's interesting to me is Barnes just keeps humming along. And we got mm -hmm. some, we got some comments uh, that we'll show you in the next segment uh, in talking about some guys that are leaving. He just kind of lets it roll off him. I look at a lot of coaches mm -hmm. who have been bothered by this and left the game. So that's it. I'm out. Mm -hmm. Nick Saban, that's part of the reason he's, I'm out. Rick Barnes is 69 years old. And I, I always throw him and Tom Izzo, who's also 69, in the same uh, batch together because these are two guys who have had great success. They're at an age where you would think, I'm an old dog, I don't want to learn new tricks. <laughs> and yet, <coughs> he just loses a couple guys, All right, I'll go quit and get a couple guys. Are you surprised that Rick Barnes has adjusted so well to portal life? A little bit, because uh, I think if you gave him some truth serum, he would say <laughs> he's not a huge fan of it, <laughs> but he realizes it's here and it's here to stay. So I think he's done a nice job in dealing with it. Um, I think that he has also had his assistant coaches working with him in terms of identifying players that they think would be good fits. He also uh, makes sure that the players on his team are agreeable to the transfers coming in. That's another part of that. But I think he's done a really good job adjusting to this. And uh, without Dalton Connett, who knows what they would have been last year. And now he's bringing in some players. If he can get one more of these players or maybe – and there's an Ohio State guard that's out there too – if they can get uh, one or two more of those, and if they can come in and just give them 12 to 14 points a game, I know that sounds like a lot, but that would really be a huge boost to this team if they can do that. But I think he's done a wonderful job uh, adjusting and accepting the transfer portal. This isn't yeah. what you were getting at, I don't think, uh, but you made a comment there that somebody made to me in a negative way earlier this week, and that is, uh, what would they have been without Dalton Connect? Somebody threw that to me as well. He's having to survive with that. It's like I told that guy, what program isn't having to survive like that right now? Exactly. They're all doing that. So that's not like, well, if you didn't get Dalton Connect, all right, let me name the team. If Nate Oates doesn't get a whole new team, what do they do? So, I mean, yeah. that's just part of it. Um, I've heard people, this is interesting, I don't know if it got on a message board, maybe a Facebook group, maybe somebody tweeted it. But for the last two weeks, I was in, I was in Middlesbrough, Kentucky recently, and somebody was like, so, Rick Barnes, retiring, huh? I don't, I don't think so. <laughs> uh, and somebody called me this week. Somebody who's worked for years in the media gave me a call and said, not in sports, but called from work to the media. Called and said, what are you hearing? I keep hearing that uh, Barnes is going to uh, retire. What's, what's the word? It's like, I, I really don't think he would leave them in the lurch like this. I think if Rick Barnes retires, you'll know about it as soon as the season ends, maybe before. Uh, I don't think he's going to do a retirement tour at some point either. So I think it would be clean break at the end. I certainly don't think when he's bringing in players right now that he's looking at retiring. So I'm a little surprised this keeps floating around. That said, you look at, you just added another kid for a uh, big man from Alabama. You beat Mississippi State for him. Yes, Dwayne Brown for the class of 2025. He's showing no signs of, of slowing down. He's adjusted to the portal. Are you guys surprised at all that at 69, it doesn't seem to be any kind of let-up at all. I, I'm a little surprised by that. Anybody? 
I'm a little I'm a little surprised because I just think you look at some of the more established coaches. I'm just sitting here thinking like Jay Wright. I'm thinking about some others who said I'm tired of dealing with Shishevsky, this. Williams. Just, yeah, the, the list goes on and on. Uh, just like uh, Nick Saban, you add the portal, you add the NIL, and they've already got demands on their time. So yeah, I I think you have to be a little surprised. And and I guess the, I would also use the word impressed. Uh, you know, I, I don't know if I were in that position. If I had his money, I might have just said, I'm going to an island. Bye. <laughs> I don't know that I'm going to I'm going to buy here. an island. Yeah. Are you surprised or no? I, well, I'm, I'm really impressed by the attitude he presents. I'm, sh- I'm sure behind the scenes there are mixed yeah. feelings. I think everybody has yeah. mixed feelings at least <laughs> toward it. Uh, so everything that Rick Barnes has presented, I think part of that is probably aided by the staff that he has in place, people behind the scenes who help. Uh, I think the culture staying the way that he wants it, despite some of the transition, so guys come out, but – Hedge aside, Jordan James and Santiago Vescovi, who helped now Zakai Ziegler and Jemai Meshack. Right. I think that probably helps Rick Barnes keep the program intact with where he wants, despite moving pieces that are coming in and out. So I've been overall really impressed by the adjustment that he's made because if survival is the right way, that is what everybody's having to do. It is an annual conversation of what is your roster from one year to the next yeah. because of the free agency that exists for the players. Yeah, I think just because he doesn't maybe like it or think it's what's best for the sport doesn't mean that he can't still prosper at it and deal with it. And sometimes coaches look at things as a, as a challenge. Yeah. And he's got a great staff that does a lot of the legwork, and he comes in there and, and you know, gives his opinion and closes. You know who else, and Jimmy, you mentioned a little bit, was he wants to bring in players that the, 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 the players would, would like and would right. fit in with them. The players are talking about that this week in, in, uh, about hosting. When a guy comes in there, they said they know within minutes whether they're going to be a fit in their culture and yep. their locker room. And Meshack's one of those key guys, right? Either right. talking to him, playing like with Connect, mm-hmm. one-on-one, uh, games on the side. Yeah, he said they, they, they will joke hard with those guys because if they can't handle what they get from us, they can't handle the coaching from Rick Barnes. So that's kind of another level of the game to kind of help Rick Barnes out. There is a YouTube video out there. I think it's Run Your Race. It's a podcast, and they recently did an interview within the last year with Grant Williams talking about mm-hmm. what it's like to – he's talking about a lot of things, but he talks about being in Tennessee and what it's like to play for Rick Barnes. Let's just say we couldn't run it here. Uh, <laughs> a lot of editing. But it may be worth a search on YouTube to find that uh, because he makes it clear that it, it is not for everyone. It is not mm-hmm. for everyone. So. All right. When we come back, let's continue this basketball talk and talk about the guys who are leaving. Adu obviously caught Barnes off guard, so I don't think the door is open for a return there. It is open for Tobey Awaka, apparently. Should Tennessee make him a priority? He's here. You know what you've got. You see the talent. Should they be making it a priority to get him back? We'll discuss that next. We'll back. Welcome back to the Sports Source, the segment brought to you by Southeast Termite and Pest Control. A 50-year-old family business has an opening for a termite technician, folks. 50 years, that's how long this business has been around. That tells you how good Southeast Termite and Pest Control are to work for. Good folks. Uh, so they got the termite technician available, and you get a company truck, retirement options, health care options. It's Monday through Friday only, no weekends, 8 to 5. And they'll train you, so you don't need the experience. It's hard to beat that. So you better call Southeast Termite and Pest Control. And they've only got one opening, the one opening. So call Southeast Termite and Pest Control first thing Monday morning. Get in touch with them because I have a feeling that is not going to be open for very long. Termite technician available now with Southeast Termite and Pest Control. And I can tell you, the Haynes family are fantastic. All right. The uh, Vols had two surprise departures. Well, one a bigger surprise than the other. When asked if he was surprised by Jonas Adu, let's go ahead and put this up there. When asked if he was surprised by Jonas Adu departing, by the way, he's being pursued by North Carolina, Baylor, and Kentucky. When asked if he was surprised he was leaving, Barnes said, yeah, because he had told everybody he was fine. When that happens, you just got to realize that maybe you've got a chance to remake a roster and maybe do it a little bit different. Maybe try to find a way to obviously try to make it better. But it's a different time right now in college basketball in terms of this month. Okay, it sounds like the door's closed. Whereas with Tobey Awaka, there's a different mood here when he was asked about Awaka. We respected Tobey a lot, and we still do. But oftentimes, we've had guys tell us that after they left, they've made mistakes. And sometimes in a rush in the moment, people can listen to people and realize that maybe they should have waited and thought it out a little bit more. But Tobey, obviously, we all respect him and love him for what he did for us. 
But if he feels he's got to go through that process, he needs to do it. But with that said, we're not going to wait because we're going to move forward and build this roster as quickly as we can. It sounds like, A, do the door is closed. It doesn't sound like there's much love there uh, in terms of uh, following up on this. Uh, in terms of a walk it seems like there's still maybe an opportunity to throw that door open. Um, my question for you guys, should they be pursuing Tobe Awaka as a priority? Because you still have five slots available. You had six, mm -hmm. you got Dubar. Let's say you get Milicic. All right, so now you got four. Let's say you get Tyson. Now you got three. You, you got all kinds of openings. Yeah. Uh, so do you look at a guy who's been here, a guy whose game you know, and you see some promise there. Do you make him a priority, or do you just close the door and do your own thing? I'd make him a priority. I would want him back. Now, I know that playing time was an issue with him, and I think that he with went into the portal leaving. because, yeah, with yeah. Adu leaving, there's more of an opportunity. Now, one reason his playing time was limited a little bit is he kept getting in foul trouble. Yeah. So that was on him. However, I think with another year of experience, uh, with his ability, he started showing some more offensive aggressiveness in some games down the stretch. I think uh, he's a good fit for this team. I think he should be a priority, and I think Tennessee should try to keep him. They don't, don't pay him too many a year, okay? But <laughs> – but try to keep him. Go ahead. And, and, uh, not my money. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pay me anything you like. <laughs> then you might have a culture yeah. problem. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I think they should make him a priority, well, and I think he's a good fit for this team. Right now, what does your, your, your post players look like without him? Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that's the, the, you know, I mean, you got some – your cupboard is getting close to being bare. And has St. John's ever quit recruiting him? That's what I've heard <laughs> out there is they yeah. keep showing him the love. So he's 6'8". He's improved. He can play. Playing time, he also, Jimmy, was had the lower leg injuries, right? Going back to Hawaii, going back to in the mm -hmm. tournament play. So he needs to stay healthy, too. But, yeah, I'd make him priority number one to get him back. I would want him back if I'm Tennessee, so I would aggressively pursue. Uh, but Priority I, one or priority two? <laughs> <laughs> I would probably rather have Milicic over Tobe uh, with what his offensive game is, uh, more reliability. He's more proven, lower level, yep. but in terms of – uh, the, the foul trouble is something Toby has to improve on. He's, he's not getting 25 minutes a game at the rate that he fouls. So he needs to improve yeah. there. Uh, but he's a guy, when we're talking about culture and fit and the work ethic it takes to be a part of the program, Toby's a perfect fit in that regard. He needs to improve as a player, but I would think with time in this program, he would be a better, better player next year and would be really good for Tennessee. I agree with John. I would put him behind Milicic in terms of your priority. And how does it time out is another question, too. What if you're showing Tobey the love and then Milicic commits to you and then Tobey's like, wait a minute, what's going on? I thought I had a chance to yeah. be, come back and be a starter. Or the other way around, do you lose Milicic because you brought Tobey back and he doesn't see an opportunity? So it is, it's crazy how you have to play that without Tobey wanting to just blindly come Look, back. Look, if, if their feelings get hurt that easy, they probably shouldn't be playing major college basketball anymore. Well, I got news for you, yeah, though. With the portal, that, that doesn't work anymore. I mean, that's, that's an old-timer type of thought that I would think as well. <laughs> no, I mean, I don't mean you're an old-timer. I mean, that's, that's I, an old-timey way of thinking. That's pre-portal way of thinking. I feel the same way. It's like, do you ever, are you ever going to weather any adversity and overcome something? No, I'm leaving because there's a buck. <laughs> and now the NCAA has said you can transfer every year. Now. Goodness it's wide gracious. open. So Goodness the gracious. idea of anybody working through anything, and you hear the coaches say that. Uh, a lot of them talk about it. It's like, I don't know how you're going to raise these these players as men because they're not used to sticking around anywhere. Well, if they have options and they see that yeah, one I can spot play here. here. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they're, but he they're hearing the recruiting pitch on the other side yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. My, I guess my, uh, my problem is he's got five slots available. All right, so you can't take – you can only take a Waka or Milicic. Well, what can you do with the others? Or are they just useless because somebody's going to get mad? Oh, no. So you can really only have a team with five players? Yeah. Well, well, you're cutting into my players. <laughs> well, he wouldn't have to worry, Barnes wouldn't have to worry about uh, To make myself sound time. like an yeah. old-timer. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, that's kind of the deal, isn't it? I mean, you got five slots. These guys are going to play something. Yeah. For, from a number standpoint, I thought even if Adu and Tobe were back, I think they should have added a post. Yeah. Especially when yes, you've exactly. after Milicic yeah. and Awaka. Right. But, but that's just old-timers talking. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they, too. <laughs> Go after both. And I also yeah. wonder, could Milicic actually play more on the wing, more outside? Offensively, he plays he, on the perimeter a lot. Well, if you yeah, look at his yeah. three-point so, numbers, uh, you think so. That's right. what I was thinking. Right. So could they coexist? Yeah. I Batman think, and Robin go. I, I, would just, okay. I, would, I would hope that if you found seven or eight guys, yeah. they could all coexist. You'd have to have a roster. 
It can't just be five guys. You have to have somebody who's on the bench. Exactly. Though no one ever wants to be on the bench, somebody's going to have to be there at some point. And look, this is on the... Last year may have been... I mean, if you think about it, last year you, you had two guys that came in as transfers, but you had three guys who'd been here year after year. Yeah. Two guys that came back for their fifth year, mm-hmm. like COVID year. You had only two, tra- only two transfers. It was kind of a selfless bunch, tons of people. Yeah. I don't know that you're going to – that may have been the last taste of that. Yeah, it may be yeah. we have to get used to, oh, well, you can't sign him because he'll leave. I mean, <laughs> which is kind of pathetic, which is another reason. If I were Barnes, I'd be on the island. <laughs> uh, I, I give him credit for that. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Well, I wouldn't want to go to that. I, <laughs> <laughs> I just got back from Hilton Head. That island's pretty good. It's pretty good. All right. Very good. When we come back, we have a lot of football to come, but we play some rapid fire next. Kim Caldwell, superstar. We'll talk uh, transfer portal nonsense. Another nail in the NCAA's coffin. That's all next. Rapid fire. Come on back. Welcome back into the uh, Sports Source. This segment brought to you by Madisonville Marine. Think summer, folks. G3 boats, G3 sun catcher pontoons, offering instant rebates up to six thousand dollars on all in stock inventory purchased between today and may 12th six thousand dollars in instant rebates on some of the best boats on the water madisonville marine there is no better place to buy a boat especially right now through may 12th madisonville marine highway 411 north in madisonville all right we have an extra second here, and I'm going to use it on something I forgot to throw out in that last segment very quickly, just talking about Adu. I thought it was interesting. Before we get into rapid fire, the way he left here and the way he didn't tell them and the way it sounded like Barnes didn't, you know, he said it was fine. You wonder if he, getting back to people they listened to, you wonder if he and his people thought he was scapegoated for the way he was benched against Purdue. I just wonder if that didn't lead to, oh, so you're not even going to put me out there in the second half? Just popped in my head. I was going to ask it. Now I'm just going to float it out there and let you wonder. These guys don't get to comment. Because we got to get to four other questions. Vince, your question number one. Let's go ahead and put up the quote. Uh, this week, Danny White said of new Lady Vols coach Kim Caldwell, Kim is a star. We have a superstar. I'm really excited. I think she is the most talented up-and-coming coach in the country. She's going to be great for us. Vince, will Lady Vol fans buy what Nanny White is selling? That's that's a hard sell right there. That's big stuff. I think I think a fair amount of them will because of the benefit of the doubt factor. So I mean that that's pretty that's pretty big compliments. Like it's hard for a lot of us that don't have the background that Danny White does to to put that label on. But I do think Danny White deserves the benefit of the doubt that he's identified one of the bright up and coming. Uh, coaches in, in the, the country. He has done it a lot mm-hmm. in multiple sports. Mm-hmm. And then also that's part of his role, right? He's the athletic director. He's the hype man. He, he's got to believe <laughs> in it. He's got to sell it. So I'm not saying he doesn't believe in it, but you put it in a way to where it can be digested and then that can be moved on and uh, and resold for you by the fans. We said the Sunday she was hired, before she was hired, she was going to be the part that we thought, hey, this is probably her because she shoots a ton of three-pointers and he likes that kind of system. If it's her, we give her the benefit of the doubt because of what he's done. So I agree with all that. I just thought, this is, wow. It's she not is a, a very, star. It's we not a, have a superstar. It's not a very big sample size for her coaching career to be a superstar in my book. We have a superstar. That is not, I'm trying to think of the times I've heard an AD say that about yeah. a new hire. That's just, that stood out to me as... A big sell. It's All right. Nice tickets. Yeah, it does. All right. <laughs> Josh, the state of Virginia passed a law last week that made it legal for schools to pay players with NIL dollars directly. Wow. Meaning the NCAA can't say a thing. If the school, school no longer has to have a collective go out, school can do it in Virginia. Virginia, Virginia Tech, James Madison, uh, they can now <laughs> pay directly. The question for you, can the NCAA exist in this future? Or will something else have to be built? Can the NCAA even, can they even tweak it and fix it? Or for the big schools, does it have to go away and you just have to start from scratch or something else? I mean, maybe by name, like there's some kind of takeover. <laughs> and somebody else is running whatever the NCAA is going to be in the future when it it's comes Van to... It's Van Halen with Sammy Hagar. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> with, uh, with football and men's basketball. It's an old-timer comment right there. <laughs> 
<laughs> but um, no, I mean, it's just the days are the days are numbered, and I think they're the number is a lot shorter than we thought maybe a year ago, five years ago. Of okay, things are going to change right. in the future of college sports. It's changing a lot more quickly than I anticipated. Yeah, and I, I just. The idea that, well, we're going to tweak this and work with the NCAA mm -hmm. and we'll make the NCAA this new thing that can work. The stuff is changing too fast and too, in, too big of ways. Well, I don't I mean, know they don't stand a chance in these fights against yes. the state. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. I, don't, I don't see how the NCAA can even exist. For, I can see it existing for everything, all the other sports. I can see it existing for everything but the biggest 50 or so football programs. But... The more it goes down this path, I, I just look like you're going to have to create something completely different. I don't know how you get the NCAA to become something else. All right, Jimmy, college football approved the use of in-helmet communications and a two-minute warning this week. Is it a good thing or a bad thing that the line between college and pro football continues to disappear? I mean, we got free agency now, basically. You're paying players, and now the rules are looking more and more identical every year. Is that a good thing or a bad thing that they're no longer two separate entities? To me, it's not a good thing. I like the separation. I like having a difference in, in the rules that, of the game in college versus the pros. Uh, and I used to think it was because you paid players in the pros, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's how, that argument's out the window. No, I, I would just rather it separate. I don't think you, I don't think you need a two-minute warning. I'm not a big fan of that. I do like the, the helmet situation, though, where you can communicate that way. But the other parts of it, I, I would rather have some separation in the rules that they have college football versus NFL. Next big one you're going to see is the NFL's changed their kickoff rule this right. year to match the, U, the UFL, yeah. uh, which I didn't even realize was playing. But my <laughs> guess is once the NFL does that this season, or maybe two seasons down the road, you're going to see college football do the exact same thing with their kickoffs as well. Just a guess. All right, Chuck, last one is for you. On the first day of the portal, let's go ahead and put the numbers up. On the first day of the spring portal, when it opened, 221 scholarship players entered. Total scholarship players over the last two windows, the last academic year, 2,100 players. That is a 25% increase over the prior year. So a quarter more in the last year than the previous year. 20% of those entering on day one of the portal this year had already transferred at least one time before. And we're talking football here, but we were talking earlier right. about the two guys coming here for basketball. Both of them, this would be their third stop. Uh, my question for you, true or false, the popularity of college football will decline if the transfer issue isn't fixed. True, 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 true. And you're seeing that more and more. I mean, I'm seeing it in social media. Jimmy, you know, you're talking about the line between college and pros and all that. It's, it's so much more like that. You're a free agent. You know, it's, it's year to year, unlimited transfers. To, to me, there's too many dates that you give the, chance, the kid the chance to make a decision. I mean, you've got to do something about how many times they can say, okay, assistant coach made me mad today, I'm out of here, I'm going to transfer. So, yeah, it's turning more and more people off. It really is. It'll be in big picture, and I'll let, we got a second here, so I'll let everybody chime in on that one. Um, I could see it hurting, like, Tennessee or Kentucky or Michigan, and people just saying, I'm not going to get as invested as I have in the past. I'm not going to spend every Saturday over there. I don't think it'll hurt the sport on television because it's on. I think people will still flip by and watch it, and they'll sit there and watch, and, and that's still going to make TV money be great. But I, I do agree. I think a lot of fans, if this doesn't stop, I think you're going to see it eat away at attendance and that level. Mm -hmm. But I think it's just something that's on, yeah. on television. I don't think that'll hurt. I, I agree with you, but the other part of that too is that betting is so easy now. I think that a lot of people bet, and they're more invested, so they'll watch a game. They'll, they'll watch some of these bowl games that we think there are too many of. Yeah. But I got money on yes. Maine versus Boston U. So <laughs> it's a great I, game. I do think the I do think the the betting portion of it will maintain a certain level of popularity. But I, got, I do think attendance will go down. Who you got, Black, uh, black Bears or the Terriers? The, the yeah, Terriers. Okay. Yeah, I'm <laughs> scared of Terriers. Yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, does anybody else want to jump in on that? you got like 20 seconds. I just on. wonder, casual fans, maybe they're already kind of checking out this time of year and treat the transfer portal kind of like recruiting where they're like, okay, if we get a five-star, maybe I'll talk about that. But otherwise, I kind of move on. For, for the diehard fans that care about it 12 months out of the year, it's extra things to pay attention to. So when a, a player at – a running back, Damian Martinez, enters the, enters the portal, whether Tennessee's going to be in the mix or not. Diehard fans think, can we get that guy? Yeah. And it creates mm -hmm. the, the spoken off like, conversation. Spoken like a radio talk show host, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, let me ask you this. Do you think that it is – I mean, you could make a case that nothing can hurt college football. Do you think it can? 
or I agree with Chuck that I think it'll hurt at some level. I don't think it's going to hurt TV. But, Do you make a case that it doesn't hurt it at all? Well, I think it can turn off some people, but I think it adds interest for others. It, for others. It's kind of like they're bad calories, but people are still going for them. <laughs> Good deal. People are betting on whether Martinez goes to Tennessee. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Take care of his own. Ch- <laughs> Vince has already lost. <laughs> <laughs> when we come back, Philip Fulmer would have made a lot more playoffs in the current format. But would the Vols have won a lot more titles as a result? Let's debate that next on The Sports Source. Welcome back to the Sports Source. This segment brought to you by Daniel Hood. Roofing, spring in East Tennessee means stormy weather. Don't fall victim to a bad break from Mother Nature. If your neighborhood gets hit with high winds, hail, heavy rain, get a free roof inspection from Daniel Hood Roofing. They want to put a new roof on your, on your house, there's no question. But they also want your insurance company to pay for it. So if you've got a storm, call DanielHoodRoofing.com. Well, call Daniel Hood Roofing. <laughs> dial up DanielHoodRoofing.com because if you just dial DanielHoodRoofing.com, nobody's going to answer. It's a computer. Then again, in the world of AI, maybe it will. All right, let's take a look at today's poll question. I want to get you involved in this. Ooh, okay, some of you have already been online to play along. The poll question today, would you like your NFL team to draft Joe Milton? Whoa. The answers are, with that arm, heck yes. Or, sure, but as a project. Or, nope, I've seen enough. And it looks like right now, sure, but as a project, is leading. Only 5% of you say, heck yeah, with that arm, let's bring him into our team. Uh, get your smartphone out, click at that QR code, and vote for us. That's good, Chuck. Uh, <laughs> tell us what your thoughts are. We don't let him vote. Uh, <laughs> tell us what your thoughts are on this. You can also go to sportsource.tv forward slash polls, or just go to sportsource.tv. You'll see polls at the top. Click the polls. It'll take you right there, and you can click on it. But let us know, because we like to keep track of that. You see the little lines moving already. So uh, tell, us, uh, tell us what you think. Would you want Joe Milton, a former Vol, on your NFL team? All right. Uh, this week, Adam Sparks, the Knoxville News Sentinel, who I really like his stuff, by the way. Just that's kiss of death to say I like somebody. <laughs> but he does a great job. Uh, he spoke to Philip Fulmer this week at his golf tournament for the Boys and Girls Club, and they raised $3 million. So kudos to Coach Fulmer and his players who came in for that. Uh, he was asked about the playoffs. Let's go ahead and put up the graphic here. And Fulmer said, I wish so badly now that it had been around. As a coach, I wasn't sure if I was for the playoff. But now I really wish we had it because we had a better run during that time than almost anybody. In 2001, we would have probably won it, to be honest, if we had a playoff. All right, well, let's take a look at those years and what they did. Now, according to the Sentinel, they would have made the playoffs eight times in the 12-team format that's coming up. This doesn't take into account what could be a 14 playoff or 14 14 team uh, uh, lineup that, that's coming in a couple years uh, 93 95 96 97 98 99 that's a heck of a stretch right there and then 01 and 03 for Philip former would have been his playoff teams you saw what the record was their final record and you saw what happened in the bowl games my question for you guys is you can look at this two ways one if they'd been in those playoffs all those times they'd have won more than one national title the other way to look at it is if they'd have been a playoff, they might not have won their one national title. Would they have won more? <laughs> Would they have won their one? What's your thoughts? And who was getting this one first? I'll go to Josh. I do think the line would be one and a half. I think they at least get one. I'd feel comfortable in that. 98, that, the way that team was built. Something I, magical, I think they, too. I they, they still get it done. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm not sure what the other year is. I'm going to mo- <clears throat> excuse me, most confidently say they get it. 95 is interesting. That, that team was so good at the end of the season. and Beat Ohio uh, State. And that's yeah. the, an Ohio State team with a ton of talent, uh, NFL talent as well. So that would probably be where I lean. But I kind of just play the average. And I say, if they're going to be in it pretty much every year in those years we, that you just laid out on the screen, I'd probably give them another one. So yeah. they, they'd run up to some tough matchups like Nebraska. But maybe somebody that they play in a championship game gets knocked off before they get there. So I, I would give them a second. I would give him a second one also. And the 95 team is one I would point to the most. Yeah. Uh, John Chavis, who was a defensive coordinator at Tennessee, said that's the best defense he had, better than 98, which I thought was pretty interesting. 95, they uh, lost to Florida. Uh, Nebraska, I think, won the national championship that year. Didn't they blow out Florida? Crush Florida. That would have been the, the tougher game along the way. But just law of averages, if you get there eight times, 
possibly, but I thought the 95 team, more than 01, I thought Miami in 01. Yeah, uh, that, would it, now, that yeah. team had like, what is it? 38, 30? 38 NFL draft picks on it. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good right there. So yeah, I, I, would, I would have said one more, and I would have pointed to 95 as the most likely. I would have kept it right where it is, personally. I'll stay, and I lived in Ohio at the time of 98. <laughs> I could do a whole segment on how those people freaked out about how they would have beaten Tennessee. You know, beat Michigan State at home and you'll get a shot. But here's the thing. <laughs> Philip Fulmer didn't always win the big game. I mean, th- that's why they call him a big game. But he, he had a history. Spurrier usually got him when they had pretty even teams, but Spurrier usually got him. That said, there's one guy that won big games less than Philip Fulmer, and that's John Cooper. So if the idea was well, you wouldn't have played Florida State, you'd have played Ohio State, and they'd have beaten Ohio State the same way they did in 95. I w- so I think they would have kept 98. I don't know if they would have added another, though. But what do you think? I would say two as well. So I think they would have added another. There's plenty of NFL talent on, on those Tennessee teams as well. And I, I also think well, you'd have to see what the path is there. It, it wouldn't yeah. absolutely go all chalk, but you want to see what some of the, the pathways I haven't seen that. But I, I do think just from numbers like the guys mentioned and uh, just from the talent they had and finishing off strong in their final game, I, I think they would have cashed in one more. Well, Super fan? They've won eight more. <laughs> as they didn't the, even need the playoff for the eight. Yeah, it's the old timer on this panel. I, I was talking about that's an old time theory. I, I, I about believe you. you win championships with defense. And I like what Jimmy said. And I, Josh, if you can see this, what does that say right there? It says 95. It says 95. And that that's was how much the you year. Bet on it. That, was, that was the year I already had down because I that's believe how that old team. That's how old he is. But I really do. I, I think you, I, yeah, I think out of eight times, yeah. I think the dominoes or everything's going to fall just right to get one at least okay i just look at it and think how many times did you have a team that was equal to or better than florida and you won the mm-hmm. sec twice in that decade so you're telling me well couldn't win the sec but they're going to go right out and beat everybody else in america they wouldn't have to deal with florida yeah maybe yeah. Not. <laughs> yeah, that's play them. That's and you're not, this isn't in september it's here's, later in the year well here's another question i've got just for jimmy because we got we got to make this fast but i thought this was interesting okay. i wanted to go back a little further if you go back to with the 12-team format into the majors years, he would have made the playoffs in 85, mm-hmm. 89, 90, 91. If he's in the playoffs in 89, 90, 91 and has a three-loss season by seven points in 92, does he get fired and does Fulmer get the job? Now, there was a lot of personal stuff behind the scenes that went into that. But if you look at it that way, and if we're going to do this hypothetical, majors would have been in three straight playoffs – I don't know that he gets fired in 92. I think that's a really good point. I would, you would think probably not, although he was sharing or winning SEC championships. However, getting into the playoffs and maybe making a run, uh, I think that would have been a whole lot harder to, to cut bait with John Majors. Yeah. Interesting. Now, there was yeah. a lot of personal stuff behind this. There was. <laughs> yeah. And health issues. Yeah. And knives. Uh, went, into, went into backs. When we come back, which led to health issues, when we come back, how does the NFL view some former balls? We'll talk about this week's NFL draft next. Who goes where and uh, when? Come on back. We are way over, so let's have a little fun with this one. Welcome back. This segment brought to you by Safety Systems and from Porch pirates and home invasions. All you have to do is put it on YouTube and you'll see how many people are trying to break into homes and businesses these days. Do yourself a favor. Get a top flight security system right now. Get it from Safety Systems. Again, the best advertisement that I can give them and the best thing I can tell you is just start noticing around town how often you see that logo right there on a white sign or a white sticker in the business window or in someone's front yard. There's a reason they are all over East Tennessee, folks because they've been really good for a long time. Call VFL J.J. Surlis and the team at Safety Systems this week, safetysystems.com, to learn more. Okay, uh, let's remind folks of the poll. Let's put that back up there, see where that's at. Yeah, uh, poor Joe isn't getting much love there. We'll see if you want to continue to uh, click for us and let us know. We'll look at how that adjusts over the next couple of segments. Uh, let's take a look at NFL.com's draft grades for the Tennessee Vols that they have listed as potential draftees. Uh, they got Jalen Wright as the top guy, 6.33 is his grade. And what that grade means, in their language, he will eventually be a plus starter, be a good starter in the NFL. That's what that grade means. Next is Kamal Haddon and McCallum Castles and Joe Milton, and they are all scheduled as average backup or special teamer. That's that level of play. Jabari Small and Ramel Keaton, priority, undrafted, free agent. 
Quick question. We'll catch back up on this one. Do you agree with the way that's listed there? Do you agree with that ranking top to bottom? The one that stood out to me is I've thought of Joe Milton being the third guy as opposed to the fourth guy behind McAllen Castles. Obviously, it's going to come down to which team needs a tight end, which team needs a backup quarterback. Right. But I was a little surprised. If there was one thing that stood out to me, it was Milton being behind Castles. But you guys may be talking to different draft nicks on your various shows. You may have been hearing that all along. Josh, what are your thoughts on that? It makes a lot of sense to me. I think Castles is a really good athlete and could it's that special teamer. Yeah. yeah th- there's a chance to make an impact quickly. Which Milton won't get that opportunity. Right. Think. That, yeah, it doesn't apply to him. Uh, same can apply to Haddon. I, I could see him being a starter in the future if he continues to develop. As a coverage guy, he has a lot of ability. So uh, the order that you presented makes a lot of sense. Jalen Wright is a no-brainer at number one. Chuck, you agree with that order? Or would no, you I would move Milton up just a little uh, over, over being picked on that. And I think there's more teams looking at him just because everybody's looking for that big arm, aren't they? And you take a – you roll the dice kind of in the fourth, fifth round or something yeah. like that? Well, we'll get to that a little later. Okay. We now, we now know Chuck's answer. <laughs> uh, gentlemen. As a, as a prospect, I would have Milton rated ahead of Castles. As a pro, Castles will be better than Milton. In fact, I think Castles is going to be the second best pro out of that group. Behind right. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I think the reason why you look at Milton ahead of Castles is because he, with Haddon and, Mil- and uh, Wright, were at the Combine. So you, there's a separator for you just in an image and impression. And, and also, Castles tested really well. He didn't get a chance mm-hmm. to go to the combine, but his testing, yeah. what he did at the pro day, would have been one of the best tight ends at the combine. And, so uh, that's why it's a little bit of a move. The flip yeah. side of that is not going to the combine or being invited really motivated Castles, right? He even improved even more than he would have been a lot on a lot of his uh, numbers and times and everything else. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to, before we're going to close here, but I do want to put up a stat, which I thought was interesting, something to watch for this week. Tennessee has had 10 people drafted in Heupel's first two seasons. Uh, that's the Vols' best span since 2006, 2007, when they had 11. All right? If the Vols have four players drafted this year, it will be the Vols' best three year span since 06, 07, 08. Hmm. 14 picks. Didn't know that's, that. That's pretty impressive. So the question is: This the new glory days? Well, we'll see. <laughs> uh, but that that is a that's a shift from what we've been seeing pre Josh Heupel. Obviously, you want to have you want to start having yes. more guys third round, second round, first round. Yeah. But well, multiple O for years. Yes. yes. Yeah. Getting people picked. That's a step in the right direction. Okay. When we come back, let's see if we agree with some of the NFL.com's breakdown of the strengths and weaknesses of Joe Milton. That could be fun. Come on back on the sports. <laughs> Welcome back into the Sports Source, this segment brought to you by Games and Things, and today is the last day of the Games and Things spring clearance sale, folks. All kinds of deals from East Tennessee's best selection of pool tables, best selection of home theater seats, best selection of kitchen and bar stools, best selection of, well, you get the idea. And they've got everything down there, from dart boards to darts, from card tables to card chairs <laughs> to go with the card tables. Uh, pool tables, pool cues. They got the big stuff, they got the little stuff, they got it all. Get down to games and things today. The sale ends today. Spring clearance sale, and folks, life should be fun, and these folks make it fun. Get down to games and things. All right. In this segment, well, let's go ahead and show you the results of the poll. There we go. We didn't give you a long time to vote, and it just flipped even as we went there. So Joe got a little love. He, he ticked from six to seven there, I think, as we flipped to it. But 51% say, yeah, they'll take him as a project. 42% say, nope, I've said enough. And 7% of you said, with that arm, heck yeah, put him on my NFL team. Heck so. yeah doesn't mean immediate starter. Like, it's no, just it, on the team, you know? Yeah, I wouldn't want him on my team, though. <laughs> 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 no, I hope he does well. I hope he winds up on a team. I don't want him on my team. Because uh, I don't think he has the processing speed. But uh, at any rate, let's talk about that. Maybe I'm wrong. We have the strengths and weaknesses, and I'm going to read them to you, so if you can't read the graphic, I understand. And then Chuck, I'm going to, you're, oh, here's what I want to do. And Chuck, you can be the first to chime in here. Okay. But as I read these, if anybody sees anything that stands out to them that you agree with or disagree or is an understatement or an overstatement, just jump right in. Here's what it says about Joe Milton. This is NFL.com. This is their scouts. Elite size and arm string are both well beyond positional norms. These are the strengths, obviously. Throws blazing heat to beat coverage into tight windows, delivers long off-platform throws with the flick of a wrist. Florida. 
will stand his ground and take punishing hits to make the throw. Able to keep his eyes downfield while deftly sliding around pocket pressure. I don't know about that one. That was like a big weakness to me, rolling out outside the pocket. We all kind of in in on that one. All right. Posted 32 touchdowns against just five interceptions over three seasons in Tennessee. There's no arguing that. That's Mm -hmm. legit. Mm -hmm. Next, strong against potential sacks and escapes the pocket to extend the play. Not as often as I would like. No. No. Sometimes didn't see the rush on the backside. Right. But he does have some escapability. Yeah, it's just not a consistent like right. you'd see in some of these guys. Not right? like Hook, Hendon Hooker. Right, yeah. right. It's Josh, you're easy. being quiet, so you agree with me. <clears throat> yeah, on, on the run, I think um, getting out of there and still being able to extend the play, when Nico came in, that was one of the talked about positives is, hey, that's going to improve Yeah, you know, yeah. from yeah. a senior okay. to a freshman. And we don't need to put the graphic back up. You guys read it, and you can just listen to me talk about it. Weaknesses. <laughs> Disturbing lack of placement and timing as a deep ball passer. Kind of counteracts that whole strong arm thing. Yeah, and a the disturbing tight lack of placement. Yeah, the, the, the tight window thing. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. He gets it into tight windows. But I'm he doesn't out of my chair. He but waits it's, until it's tight before he throws. <laughs> <laughs> completed, ju- <laughs> completed just 38% of his throws beyond 10 yards. Wow. And less wow. than 20 on those that went 80 yards. Right. <laughs> or went more than 20. <laughs> uh, struggles with anticipatory throws, running receivers into collisions. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Telegraphs throws between the hashes, giving safeties an easy jump on the ball, which we talked about last week. You yeah. noticed they were throwing over the middle more in the spring game. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's reluctant to do so in games. Yeah, Josh Heupel noticed that weakness with yeah. the play call yeah. last year. Desires to throw the ball through receivers rather than deliver with touch. Jake? Yeah, I think that's a funny way of putting it, though. <laughs> he wants to throw the ball through the receiver. <laughs> Inconsistent tying his feet to eyes and squaring to his targets. He's inconsistent tying his feet to eyes and squaring to his targets. That's something that Matt Sims brought up, that sometimes when he gets out of the pocket, it's like his arm because it's so strong, it's disconnected from the rest of his body, which leads to some accuracy. Chris Sims or Matt Sims? Matt Sims. He's an analyst now. Yeah. Uh, Frequently forces moving targets to break stride to make the catch. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I think those are all things we've talked about that hopefully will change with Nico taking over. Makes it sound like he's a terrible quarterback. He's not a terrible no. quarterback. I think, I think last year's record tells you exactly he's an 8-4 and four quarterback. And I think it's interesting, you know, I, I follow my pro team and to listen to fans in other areas say, what about this guy? He's got a big arm. Let's go get him. It's funny to think about, you know, you just, you just want to say, look at the system with Hendon Hooker and then look at the system with Joe Milton. Right. That, that and, tells and you the difference. One of the big differences there, one that processing what's in front of you and then being able to deliver an accurate ball. Yeah. I mean, those two things to me right there are the big red flags for. Hope Milton. I'm wrong, though. Hope I'm wrong. Hope he tears it up. I mean, he, seemed to, he, he waited his time. By all accounts, he was a pretty good teammate over there. So hope I'm completely wrong. Hope having, he does well. Having that position succeed in the NFL under Josh oh, Heupel, yeah. whether it's Hooker or Milton, yeah. would, would do wonders. For oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, and it's one of the yeah. problems with Hooker being hurt last year mm-hmm. is you, it's, it's a delay. You want to put that myth to bed that he can't mm-hmm. prepare guys for the NFL. Yeah, the system. And, yeah. Or it's and, a system. And, and yes. golf, also, golf also had a really good year. Yes, and so he's now he's probably so, going to get a new deal. So yeah, maybe a while before. Yeah. He and it wasn't the there the statement from Milton that he wasn't a huge fan of the up tempo, the type of yeah, offense. He, it he was. likes it better a little yeah. slow. Right. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. All right. When we come back, let's do some prognosticating, and we'll do it with straight faces somehow. <laughs> uh, we'll tell you exactly where Joe Milton and Jalen Wright, when they will be drafted, and also by what teams. Yes, that's right. It's going to be highly accurate. Come on back on the sports. Floor. Welcome back into the Sports Source. This segment brought to you by Chris Smith Insurance. And I want to invite you to reach out and get to meet Chris Smith of Chris Smith Insurance. This is a guy, it's a great story. It's a guy who felt his previous insurance company let him down on a homeowner issue. So he went out and just started his own agency. (laughs) He said there has to be a better way for this. There has to be someone who will put the client first. And here is proof that there's still somebody out there, still an insurance agent you can go to who puts you first, not a company that, well, we know you've been paying in for years, but we're going to fight you tooth and nail. It's good to have somebody on your side. csmithagency.com is where you can go to learn more about Chris and his team. All insurance isn't equal. Boy, that's true when you look up these guys. 
I invite you to get in touch with Chris Smith this week. All right, a little bit of fun to close this out. We're going to tell you where Joe Milton <laughs> and Jalen Wright will be drafted, what round, and by what team. And, yes, we're, we're going to make it really accurate, I'm sure. So, uh, let's start with Bazooka Joe Milton. Right. Chuck, show us what round you think he's going to go in. Now, why would, you, why would you write it that small? Okay. Well, I can mean, I can make it bigger. We'll make it way hey, bigger. Fifth. There you go. <laughs> yeah, there you go, man. Uh, so, we've got him picked twice in the fifth round. Yeah, there you go. Fifth, I, yeah. I think that's going twice in the fifth round. Twice in the fifth round. Mm. No, I think that's about right. It, it's, and if teams, you know... You don't want to also Everybody's quickly <laughs> writing it bigger. <laughs> yeah. Give you a panel to show. Uh, make it big. All right. I, I, that's where our teams are going to take a flyer on somebody with this much talent, especially like Andy Reid likes quarterbacks like this with the big arm. The Dolphins could. The Falcons could. Okay. Fifth round for Milton. What do you think, Joe? Uh, right. Joe. What do you think, Josh? <laughs> Joe, where is Josh going to go? Uh, sixth <laughs> round. I have Joe Milton in the sixth round. Agreed. I will go sixth round as well. So. Okay. We do it like that. Mm -hmm. Can we get set? There you go. Sixth round, Josh, and I say sixth. What do you got, Vince? Sixth round. There's a lot of teams get compensatory picks, uh, get multiple picks in that round. So I think that's where you can take a flyer if you really feel good about potentially just an upside type of pick. All right, six. Where are you going, Jimmy? I got him in the fourth round. Wow. Now, if I were to Cavaliers the wow. question, he would not be – that would be an X. Which he's not getting right. <laughs> no, I got him in the fourth round. I think that they'll just fall – somebody's going to fall in love with that arm. All it takes is one. Mm -hmm. And I think one will do it. Okay. So we got a fifth, a bunch of sixes, and a fourth. All right. Very good. Very good. What we didn't say was which team. So yeah. which team? I'm going to go with the – what have I got down here? I'm going to go with the Falcons. Okay. Falcons. No, if the Falcons are actually my pick, I have the we'll Jets get... as a backup. Okay, because we're not Maybe allowing we're... anybody to do the same thing. That's, yeah. how, that's how accurate we're going to be here. Six round to the Jets. All right. I go six round to the Bills. Because they've already got a big-armed guy in Josh Allen. Maybe they look at it and say, this guy can throw through these gale force winds we get in Buffalo. Hmm. I have the L.A. Rams. They have Stetson Bennett. That's pretty much all they have uh, as their backup behind Matthew Stafford's getting older. So I, I think Sean McVay would, uh, would like that arm. If you could combine those two guys, Bennett and Milton. Oh, wow. Right. Put Milton's <laughs> decision-making yeah. in Milton. I mean, put... Bennett's decision making in Milton's body. Go ahead. No question, it's the Raiders. They love throwing the long ball. <laughs> they haven't learned from Raiders. Jamarcus that's Russell. right. There you go. Daryl Monica and all that group. All right, uh, and we'll let you start with where Jalen Wright oh. goes, Jimmy. What okay. round? Jalen Wright, second round. Who to? Oh, um, Cleveland. Cleveland. Okay. Go. The Haslam's come after yes. another ball. All right. Go. What are you doing? Third round. Again, I think there's a number of teams that have multiple third round picks. Uh, and I have the uh, Arizona Cardinals. The Cardinals have six picks in the first three rounds of the draft, including uh, uh, three idea. in the third round. So I kind of look to see who has those extra picks. No, you're loaded up on that. Round. By the way, I didn't comment on the second round. That's the that's a high grade for you. Got yeah. all the balls going yeah. up there. Huh? Oh yeah. All right. Oh, Why yeah. they call them all balls? <laughs> all balls. <laughs> <again. laughs> I got Jalen Wright going in the third round to the New England Patriots. Now, there's no way they draft a running back in the third round, but this is just me wishing and hoping Jalen Wright would fall to the Patriots. So I'll take him <laughs> third round, and I'll say Patriots just in the hopes that he'll wind up there. What are you doing, Josh? Uh, third round to the New York Giants. Yeah. Any reason or just that's feeling? Uh, feeling, I think they need running back help, and then uh, play action to set up the deep ball to Jalen Hyatt. As if the rest of us have gotten a lot of thought. <laughs> okay. Uh, how about the third round? The third, third, the third, round. third, third, third round. <laughs> so it'd be the third pick of the third <laughs> round. Right, exactly. <laughs> I think the Panthers would be a really good pick for what they need to improve that offense. Okay. Do the Vols get four guys drafted? Do they match the three-year stretch from 06 to 08 with 14 picks? I'm going to say three. I'm going to say four. Uh, yeah, McCassels. McCassels, yeah. yeah. Or is there somebody else that will get I mean, do we, Does anybody take a shot on Jabari Small or Mel Keaton? I don't think so. Unless it's one of those compensatory things late in the seventh. They could just say, I don't want to wait and sign him as a free agent yeah. undrafted. And you're almost better if you don't get drafted. You are better. At that level. Yeah, the free agent route. If you can yeah. pick, your, pick your situation. Exactly. Okay. Jimmy, Vince, Josh, Chuck, thanks to all of you. I appreciate Thank it. Uh, thanks, for, thanks to John Wilkerson for being in Lexington. Uh, sorry we couldn't connect that. I swear, <laughs> one of these weeks we'll do that and get it on. Uh, thank you and thank our sponsors. We'll see you right back here next week.